Hello everyone, going to be doing a book review today. The book I'm going to talk about right here is The Last Action Heroes by Nick DeSemlin. Uh, the subtitle is The Triumphs, Flops, and Feuds of Hollywood's Kings of Carnage. And as you can guess from the cover, um, this is a book about action heroes, action movie stars of, of the 1980s. It's a, a follow-up to a book the author wrote a few years ago called Wild and Crazy Guys, which focused on the comedy icons of the 1980s. So so this book is, in some ways, a, a follow-up to that. Um, the book is... It's, it's a nostalgic book, but it also looks at the era, era with something of a, of a critical lens as well. Like We learn a lot about the behind the scenes. Where there's a lot of gossip in the book and, you know, a lot of stories about the all the craziness and insanity of um, 80s cinema. And and probably the, the, the main focus of the book, you can see from the cover, is Arnold Schwarzenegger and the iconic Terminator there. And above him, Sylvester Stallone is also maybe the, those are two, the main focus of the book, those two. And you can see on the, this very colorful cover, you can see um, some of the others um, the, book, the book talks about. It's a very accessible book. I mean, if you're a fan of the era, I mean, this will be a really quick read. It's really written in a very accessible way. Um, it's a, like a lot of great stories and anecdotes in here. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the main, and Stallone. I mean, their their backgrounds are fairly well known. I mean, their stories that have been to, been told many times. Schwarzenegger came to America from Austria as a young man, and um, who got into bodybuilding and became a real um, pioneer. Um, you know, in in bodybuilding and really made that the um the sport very popular and really popularized bodybuilding and physical fitness and eventually Schwarzenegger of course broke into movies although it took him a while to, to break into movies I mean he was well into his 30s by the time he became a, a um a big action star in the early mid 1980s and Stallone, the other figure in the book. I mean, he, you know, grew up in a fairly in um, challenging circumstances in New York city and famous hell's kitchen section of, of New York city and um, managed, you know, he, as a kid, he dreamed of breaking into the movies and really struggled as well in, in his early days, you know, and, and the book has some interesting stories about the links Stallone went to like all, all the awful jobs he had to take on to, to um, just to sustain himself in, in the early days. So there's a lot of good stories there. And um, of course, in the struggle to get Rocky made, which came out in 1976, which, made Stallone um, um, household name. And really the thing that got Stallone out of obscurity was that he wrote, he wrote scripts, he wrote his own movies. And um, of course, and if he hadn't written his own movies, it's a wonder if he had ever would have amounted to anything in, in show business. But it was really by writing Rocky and then being able to star in the film, which is something he really had to fight for. And, but even after Rocky, Stallone struggled, you know, he had a number of movies that didn't quite work after Rocky. And then, and, and then he went back and made Rocky too, which was very successful as well. And then by the eighties, he became um, an action star icon. So, so Stallone's road to fame was also kind of a, a, a difficult one. And that, that was interesting, like kind of, kind of knowing where these guys came from and, the lengths they had to go to to become these stars. I mean, it really was a blend of of luck and and hard work and being at the right place at the right time and just this determination to to do it. And so, and the book kind of posits those two Stallone and Schwarzenegger as rivals in the nineteen eighties. I think the book maybe plays that up a bit too much. I mean, I think they looked at each other more as friendly 
rivals. You know, I don't think they ever quite despised each other. Although their first meeting is described in the book, and they took a dislike to each other when they first met each other. But of course, much later on, you know, they began making movies together, and I think they, I guess they to this day, I guess they sort of remain frenemies. I guess would be the word for Stallone and and Schwarzenegger and. Um, and some of the other figures the book talks about, as you can see here, are Bruce Willis there, you know, who broke through with Die Hard in the in the late 80s. And Bruce Willis was, and Die Hard was a real game changer with the action movies where Stallone and Schwarzenegger became known as like kind of these muscle bound stars, you know, like almost like these cyborgs. And in Die Hard, Bruce Willis was more of a common everyman, you know, who looked like a New York cop, you know, who finds himself in this hostage situation in, in Los Angeles. And, and Bruce Willis, interestingly, you know, he was kind of a reluctant action star. I mean, he, he just wanted to be an, a working actor. Yet he kind of got pulled into, into the action genre on some others. Um, Jackie Chan, Jackie Chan is a big part of the book. Um, of course, broke in through Hong Kong cinema in the seventies and eighties. And, Probably of all these stars, he was the real deal. I mean, he did his own stunts and he did things that nobody else here would ever think of doing. And, you know, the, the things he's been able to do on the big screen um, are, are, are legendary and really sets him apart from the rest. You know, his ability to do anything to, to get to get the shot, you know, and there's a lot of great stories with Jackie Chan and his struggles to break into um the American become a Hollywood star, which he did for a time in, in the 1990s. Uh, Chuck Norris is here as well. Um, who once again, a lot of the, what's interesting, a lot of these stars were late, you know, they are almost in the middle age by the time that they became, you know, legitimate movie stars. And, and Chuck Norris is kind of a segue into kind of the, the, political and social context of the book gets into, you know, in the eighties, it was, you had the height of the cold war, you had anxiety about terrorism and, and xenophobia and things like that. And for a time, all these action stars kind of got into that. Clearly Stallone was at the forefront with um, the Rambo movies, which those first three Rambo movies, I think if you watch those, they, they really give you a sense of the political climate in in America at the time. I mean, the very first one, First Blood, is it's a very um, somber movie about a alienated Vietnam veteran who who is not treated well once he wasn't treated well at all once he came back to America and ends up getting into a um, shooting war with a local police force. In in the movie, it's in Washington, and the David Morrill novel based on it it's in Kentucky but but it's really about the disillusionment and the polar polarization in America after Vietnam by the time you get to the second Rambo movie though it's it's all about Rambo going back to Vietnam and rescuing you know POWs who MIAs who were left behind and and the Chuck Norris movies really got in, in on this too uh, there was the Missing in Action movies, and the Delta Force movies, which dealt with hostage crises that if America was defeated in the Vietnam War in reality, but really in the movies in the 80s, it was like this need to win the war in the movies. And we see that a lot. And Well, by the third Rambo movie, you know, he's in Afghanistan, <laughs> you know, helping the the quote freedom fighters of, of Afghanistan who of course later became the Taliban. So, so, and by the time the third Rambo movie came out at the end of the eighties, I mean, it, you know, the, it was all the cold war was starting to finish up, really start to end. And so, you know, Stallone and Norris, they, they all had to move on to other, other things. So, but that whole Reagan era climate of, of um, this renewed patriotism and just having these very macho men on the big screen, you know, just taking care of the bad guys and, and just um, 
defeating all of America's enemies. I mean, it was something that audiences really um, responded to in, in the 1980s. So, so all all that is a big part of what the book gets into. And we see some of all the other figures here. Steven Seagal's in here, who's maybe the the strangest um, of of this group. In some ways, the most the most um, unnerving figure of this group. I mean, you know, Seagal broke into martial arts movies in the late 80s, and Under Siege was his big movie that came out in the early 90s. But, but you know, and, and the one thing the book gets, gets into is the ego among these men. And Schwarzenegger and Stallone, clearly they're, they had huge egos, but, but Seagal was like a next level type of ego and um, and I, I like I said you can read the book to get some of these stories about Seagal who you start to think is truly a sociopath um, Jean-Claude Van Damme in the book as well um, the Belgian action star who who broke in with American movies martial arts movies and um, Dolph Lundgren also in the book who, who it was of course the Rocky's antagonist in the fourth film, the the Ivan Drago um, made Lundgren. Lundgren's career never quite took off like the others. You know, he did like the He Man movie, and he did some okay lower budget action movies in the eighties and nineties. But and kind of had a resurgence recently. When, you know, Stallone cast him in the Expendables movies, and he was also in the, the second Creed film. So. So Dolph Lundgren, once again, interesting story. I mean, someone who was a, a PhD, almost had a PhD in chemistry and had Scott, had like fellowships to, to, to work in labs and was like a, a brilliant scientist. You know, he could have had an amazing career as that, but he made, instead became an action star. So there's a lot of good things, interesting stories there as well. And yeah, I mean... I guess I've mentioned all, all of them on the cover. And, and so the book gets into the, the political side of it. Sometimes we get into the, the personal side of, of these men and how, you know, like the idea that they all had to live up to these personas, maybe even in their personal lives, it seemed like a lot of them had trouble eventually as they became so famous, separating what they did in the movies to their personal lives, which led to a lot of um, problems for a lot of these men, whether it was through drugs, through divorces, through a lot of the struggles they had with with um, attaining that high level of, of stardom. So, so another figure who's not on the cover, Wesley Snipes is in here as well, who who became a, a rose as a, a black action star in, in the eighties and nineties. Snipes also appears throughout the book in more of a peripheral way, but um, but his films were important too, like like Passenger Fifty Seven, and um, his he made some movies with Spike Lee, and of course the Blade movies. So so Snipes is in the book, but I wish there would have been a little bit more on on his um, role here. Of course, he was in Demolition Man with Stallone, playing opposite Stallone, which is a really good science fiction movie that that Stallone made and and we get into the ups and downs of, of their careers like it seems like of all of them Schwarzenegger had the best career sense like Schwarzenegger was wise enough where he sought out good directors and he took direction you know he really wanted to find the, the best directors so he worked with like John McTiernan with with Predator and of course James Cameron with the the Terminator movies so he was very strategic about the movies he chose to do. And then later on, he did more comedies and he really wanted, which was a real strategic move, you know, to broaden his audience, you know, maybe getting um, more female fans by making comedies to just to reach a bigger demographic by not just becoming like the, the big action star. And Stallone tried to do that too with somewhat um, less success. So, so that's, one of the, the plot threads or story threads running, running through the book. So yeah. Um, 
you know, and how they all became entrepreneurs, like the planet in Hollywood. There's an interesting chapter on how Stallone and Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis decided to become entrepreneurs and start this kind of um, very unique um, restaurant franchise. So there's, um, yeah, there's a lot of great anecdotes in the book. And if you're a, a fan of movies in this era, you're really really enjoy it you get a lot of great stories if you're not familiar with this time period you know you it's a great intro to kind of getting into what the the 80s was all about and what was on um people's minds in, in, in the 1980s so i'll leave it at that from, leave it that leave it there and like i said i would recommend this book and um thanks and i'll talk to you later